Hi, I'm Adam Heimlich, the CEO of Chalice Custom Algorithms, and this is Algorithms in Advertising. It's an educational series for seasoned brand marketers, direct response marketers, digital marketers, and academics and legislators, lawyers who study advertising. I have background in all three of those areas, so I'll try to speak to all three. Uh, no matter which you're part of, some of this will be review, and hopefully some of it will be new and enlightening, and we'll all benefit from covering all three of those perspectives. We're going to try to have uh, fun teaching this. We'll have helpful graphics throughout by Chalice's uh, head of content, Marley Baker. And each episode will be just about 10 minutes. In this one, part one, we're just going to define some terms and set the stage to talk about algorithms in advertising. So first, the word algorithm. It really just means method. We all learned long division in school. Uh, you could call that the long division algorithm. Now, the algorithms uh, that are deployed in technology and advertising are more about decisions. So you could think of it as a method for making decisions or a method for automating advertising decisions. Another word we're going to use a lot is model. The simple definition of model is a representation. For example, a catwalk model such as Hansel in the movie Zoolander is the ideal representation of a man. And uh, that's one's good for me because I actually have this outfit and wear it as much as I can. Suffice it to say that a model is a representation of reality and often an idealized representation. Next, an important subset of models is a predictive model. So a predictive model is a representation of a future reality and it's based on statistics. So take a fair six-sided die. Uh, if you roll it once, it's hard to guess. There's a 16.6 .6 repeating chance of any side coming up. But if you're going to roll that die a thousand times, you could apply that basic propensity to uh, a predictive model and say it will be within five of 166 out of a thousand rolls, right? So that's taking the statistical model uh, making a prediction, and then it will be accurate, right? You could you could win a bet on it. You could seem to predict the future to someone who doesn't understand how this works. So, uh, predictive model, the application of statistics uh, to the future to quantify the probability that something will or won't happen. All right. So on to advertising. The most important model in advertising is the funnel. We'll show a simple three-stage funnel. It's a representation of a prospect becoming a customer. So first, a large number of prospects become aware. A smaller number of prospects consider a, pros a, a purchase in your category. And then an even smaller number uh, purchase in your category. So that's the funnel. Now, there are only two predictive models uh, in wide use in advertising. And interestingly, they predate digital. They are brand advertising model, and the direct response model. So this is the way that each prediction works. Brand advertising model says, should focus on the top of the funnel. The more people you make aware, the more people will consider, and the more people will purchase. So in this model, it's taking the funnel somewhat quite literally, just like you'd say, the more water you pour into the funnel, the more will come out. You're saying the more awareness you create, uh, the more purchases you'll drive. Fair enough. The direct response model says the funnel doesn't actually matter so much. Uh, direct response is the kind of advertising uh, that before digital would say things like order now, call now, right? You get direct response in the mail to this day. Uh, but digital really changed it because it became very easy to show something, some, show, show prospects something they could get right away. And I think most of us have the experience of going from awareness to consideration to purchase online in just a couple of minutes. So the direct response advertiser says, this is not, we shouldn't take the funnel too literally. Uh, what's important is that you drive response. So these models are fundamentally in intention. The direct response map, uh, advertiser really values efficiency. He'll look at brand marketing and say, yeah, the more water you pour in, the more purchase you get. But but a lot of that, a lot of that is wasted. A lot of that effort is wasted. Uh, in reality, it doesn't all come out the bottom. A lot of it becomes awareness that never ripens into demand, 
and you're spending way more on advertising than you need to with this focus at the top of the funnel. And the brand advertiser might say if the direct advertiser, well, you guys have an incentive to really focus too much at the bottom of the funnel. Uh, if you're not creating awareness and getting new customers to consider our product, uh, then you're not really doing much. You might just be harvesting demand that's created through word of mouth, uh, that exists organically, or even that was created through brand advertising. So that's the tension. One, the focus on efficiency, direct response, doesn't matter where we hit in the funnel. And one's focused on growing the top of the funnel, broad awareness, customer creation, really spreading the word and evangelizing about whatever we have to sell. This tension is a thread that runs all the way through digital advertising. Uh, speaking as someone who's who's been in it the whole time, uh, it, start, it started in conversations about banners and continued through search and social and uh, exchange-based programmatic into video and in connected TV today, it's very live. And if you think about the de definition of algorithms, that makes perfect sense. Because again, what we're doing in algorithms is automating decisions based on predictions. And whether these are brand advertising predictions to create awareness and create new customers, or direct response predictions that ignore the funnel and try to create customers all at once, they're going to be very different decisions. So the first thing to know about algorithms in advertising is that they partake of the tension between the brand advertising and direct response predictive models. And every algorithm and the way these algorithms are used together uh, manifest this tension in some interesting ways that we'll talk about in future episodes. So that's it for part one. About this and any other episode, feel free to email me questions at adam at chalice AI. Stay tuned for more. Thanks.